Over the course of the last decade, there's been a significant paradigm shift of players just wanting more out of new and upcoming shooters. And in 2023, we are in for a treat. Most of my life, the fast-paced, XP-based, multiplayer deathmatches reigned supreme. Call of Duty lobbies, Battlefield, and Halo were the holy trinity. As far as I'm concerned, that's where boys became men. Yeah, I deep-throated your mom. That doesn't make sense. Okay, you how, said, you sound, I dead? sounded like I deep throated a cow, and then I said I deep throated your mom, so your mom's a cow. <laughs> until 2015, when a new genre emerged, the Battle Royale. Starting with H1Z1, a DayZ mod that functioned as a last man standing deathmatch tournament pitting 32 players into 16 duo squads, this new style of shooter gave us something that we were missing. Don't get me wrong, playing in Call of Duty's rank modes or seeing yourself at the very top of a leaderboard at the end of a match felt great, but that paled in comparison to being the last player alive of potentially hundreds in a Battle Royale. I think I just saw a scope. What? Oh, God. Are you oh. It was unmatched. So the snowball started to roll with big behemoths like PUBG, Fortnite, Warzone, and a whole bunch of busts. Hyperscape, Spellbound, even Fallout did one. Like what? Other traditional shooter experiences just couldn't offer the level of agency that was given to players in battle royales. Each drop, you could do something completely different. Hitting the ground, trying to find a weapon before enemy players nearby did the same is just top notch, adrenaline fueling gameplay. 2017 will always be the year that I remember as the battle royale explosion. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how it's happening again in 2023 going into 2024 for three key reasons. Number one, this new gameplay style gives players even more agency than the battle royales and opportunity to have a completely different experience every time that you drop in with more risk for more reward and a plethora of potential outcomes to survive you have to consider. Increasing adrenaline and overall sense of accomplishment. Two, outside of like full blown RPG games, an unmatched progression system that gives the player more to do than just grind for skins or some weapon charm that has zero effect on gameplay whatsoever. And three, there are so many obvious signs in the industry right now of a massive push of these games coming soon, all of which we're going to discuss here shortly. Now, of course, I'm talking about the best looking upcoming game that I have seen in years, The Day Before. The Day Before, coming soon. So that was a fucking lie. Nah, that shit's 100% a scam. Like, what would be the best gameplay reveal to show next, guys? To really get our momentum back up as the previously most wishlisted game on Steam, eh, hot tub scene. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, la, la. Oh, whoa. King in the castle, king in the castle. Like what? But no, obviously not the day delayed. The next emerging genre to take over is the extraction looter shooter, which in essence is a spin-off subgenre of looter shooters like Destiny and The Division and Battle Royales. Now each game does it a little bit differently, but basically the idea is you spawn in with a loadout of weapons, gear, and consumables that you've obtained through purchasing from the in-game economy system or from the actual map itself. You then complete missions, loot containers for valuable resources, weapons, and gear, in a PvPvE environment, typically with hardcore elements, such as no map or lower TTK, hardcore ballistics and gunplay, and then try to escape that map by making it to an exfil location and extracting. If you die at any point, you forfeit everything that you came in with and everything that you obtained along the way. The extraction looter shooter is an entirely fresh new subgenre that really isn't that new. It's just being newly recognized. If I were to ask you what the first ever extraction looter shooter was, most of you would probably say Escape from Tarkov, which in a sense is true. It went into public Alpha in August of 2016, but earlier that year in March, I think is when we really got our first encounter with this style of gameplay. I'm talking about The Division Dark Zone. With as much bad that people had to say about this game, there was nothing like going through that checkpoint for the first time with no clue what to expect on the other side and getting some of the best rewards in the game from this section of the map. Except to keep that rare loot that you would find, you'd have to head to an extraction zone, put the items on a rope to be carried away by a chopper, all while encountering enemy AI as well as other players that may or may not 
not be friendly. And if you die, you lose everything. All the loot that you had in your backpack, along with the gear and weapons that you came in with, that could have taken hours to obtain. It's also worth noting that the Division later expanded upon these ideas even further with their survival mode, that added even more elements for players to worry about with hypothermia, hunger, thirst, and sickness. The same rules applied as the Dark Zone, except now you had to additionally search for not just loot like gear and weapons to extract with, but food, water, and bigger jackets to survive. Until this point, I had never played a game that had such risk for that high reward. In every shooter that I played prior, you knew who the enemy players were and your only goal was to kill them with really not much else to worry about outside of combat objectives like capture the zone or pick up some dog tags. This laid the rubric for what makes an extraction looter shooter so immersive and engaging. And you can see this kind of inspiration going on in several of the games that follow, The Cycle Frontier, Marauders, Hunt Showdown, Vigor, of course Escape from Tarkov, and now Ghost of Tabor, which is VR only, Dark and Darker, which has taken the genre to a medieval setting, allowing you to hop into proximity chat, steal some wizard's loot while telling them how small their staff is, and of course, Call of Duty's DMZ, which over the last couple of months, I've had some mixed feelings about, as I think it's missing some of the key features that make this genre so addicting. But what's interesting is, DMZ probably is playing the biggest role in this year's rise of the Extraction Looter Shooters. Let me tell you why. You feel that? Something new is in the air. Sounds of the whispering winds of shit. No, it's actually the winds of change in the gaming industry. By the way, rest in peace, Leahy. Call of Duty's DMZ is the biggest AAA iteration of an extraction looter shooter thus far, and its lack of unanimous success leaves a huge opening for what's to come. The fact that the most prominent shooter franchise in the world put out an entire game mode dedicated to this genre is a huge telltale sign that more are gonna follow. Not to mention the first usually never sticks the landing. Just look at Black Ops Blackout. Just two years later, Call of Duty released Warzone, which innovated the BR experience and became the most successful endeavor Call of Duty had ever produced. Escape from Tarkov is easily the best extraction looter shooter on the market right now. It's not even close. It has a mega niche following of gamers that finally found a game that gives them that ultra hardcore and punishing experience they've always been looking for. But the market is much larger than that specific community, and nobody has been able to capitalize on that yet. Not like Fortnite did with the BR genre. And we already have a lot of evidence that this hole is being recognized on a massive scale from dev teams big and small. If you follow my videos regularly, you see me cover multiple upcoming extraction looter shooters that have already been teased. PUBG, the BR behemoth, has announced that they are working on an Xville style shooter. That we're gonna be getting more details on soon. Bungie, the team behind Destiny, is working on one. Set in the universe of their 1990s hit, Marathon, the Division Heartland has a lot of hype around it. Not to mention Ubisoft is in dire need of a win right now. Dr. Disrespect's Dead Drop is currently in a playable alpha and is showing some promise. These are just a few that we've talked about. Ah! They killed me! No! You killed all! Oh! So just to mention quickly, if you want to follow the rise of this genre in 2023, I guarantee there will be no better place to do it than here. Consider subscribing if you're sexy and this genre is all you're really looking forward to. That also is the best way for me to gauge the interest in this topic. So thanks in advance, gorgeous. But seriously, the floor is as open as it's ever been for either a AAA or indie dev team to do what Tarkov can never do, as I alluded to earlier. And that's appeal to the masses. As incredible and irreplaceable as EFT is, I don't think I've ever played a game that to such an enormous degree makes me um, hate myself when I play it. I mean, really, it is the most punishing experience in gaming by far, especially when it comes to the learning curve, not to mention the PC barrier, which is another piece to this puzzle, but the complexity of the looting system, what's worthwhile, what's not, the elaborate medical system that goes all out to the point where you can literally perform surgery on yourself, the in-depth ballistics and gunplay with numerous types of ammo that are applicable in different ways, and most importantly, the access to all the items that will make you a formidable threat in matches being locked behind a level gap. This can make coming to Tarkov as what cheeky breaky boys refer to as a Timmy, an arduous uphill battle that a casual player just can't hack. Additionally, it's strictly for PC only, which works well within its own community, but leaves a gaping hole for a potential player base. 
this is where DMZ has attempted to insert itself. But as of yet, it is not done so, not in any dominant kind of way, with a very minimalistic and sandbox build in its beta stages that leaves the player wanting for more. The market is still very moist with anticipation for extraction looter shooters that have depth, progression, and hardcore elements, just not to the grueling extent of Tarkov, and a full release on cross-platform to reach as many as possible, as well as to appeal to the largest player base in the world, the casual. Now, what exactly is going to captivate the gaming community on a massive scale like we saw with the Battle Royale? I'll tell you. In a battle royale, you have one objective, be the last man standing. This will always result in the inevitability of PVP interaction. To win, you will eventually have to engage other players and fight, no matter what you do. Surviving a match of an extraction shooter completely diverges from that model in a way that potentially benefits casual players. When you spawn into a match of these games, your objectives are much more varied. You can be looking for a specific mission item, just looting to re-gear after a death, or maybe you're just trying to explore and discover new sections of the map. In any given scenario, PVP is not the primary goal. Unless you're a Giga Chad sweat lord, feeding the ducks after every kill, right in front of Jesus and your dog named Prapor, but any good extraction game incurs consequences to engaging another player. To be clear, not punishments. PVP is a healthy and required part of the game, but consequences that make you consider your actions carefully. A huge component to a good exfil shooter is audio, directional footsteps, gunshots, explosions, and of course proximity chat play a key role in combat supremacy. When you choose to engage a player, you have to take all this into account. You have to consider who else is around that may hear me. Do I have a visual on how many are in that guy's squad? If I fail to down that player, how easy will it be for them to retaliate? All of this goes through your mind because of the consequence of death. In a BR, if you die, you just yell at your cat. Bugger! and then you start up a new round. Life isn't that simple in an extraction shooter. This is due to the permadeath and gear loss. The paramount staple of the genre is when you die, you lose it all. And because there's no final man standing, the player is left to their own decision making. You choose when it's time to end the match in Xville. You choose whether to engage an enemy or not. You choose whether going for that special loot spot that everyone knows about is worth it or not. These decisions can either result in a massive come up for taking the risk and then surviving, or a huge L because you were outmaneuvered by a seasoned vet or overwhelmed by the OP AI. This allows for various different styles of gameplay and completely unpredictable encounters. In Warzone per se, it's expected that any player that you come across that is not in your squad is automatically hostile, no question. In these games, you have no idea. Now to be fair, I'd say a little over 50% of the people you're gonna meet are just gonna be KOS with no remorse, as that's the culture that they've been conditioned in and what we're all used to in every shooter game now. But it's also possible that you make a new single serving friend and go on some random adventure for the remainder of the raid. There's no other game style that has such unique player on player encounters. Honestly, proximity chat should be the standard in every PVP game going forward, not a commodity. In my opinion, it always improves the experience. Also, if you're new to this genre, be aware if a player comes up to you with some vague foreign accent shouting, I'm friendly, I'm friendly, just so you know, not friendly. Now, sometimes the hardcore nature or loss in this genre really sucks, but that's what makes it so sweet when you get a win. Just like how a win in a BR trumped the feeling of being at the top of the leaderboard in some random team deathmatch game mode. A successful raid where you have several kills, found that quest item that you've been looking for, and managed to barely make it to the extract with no meds left while you're on low health just feels incredible. You'll remember that raid. It's seriously the most rewarding gameplay loop that I've seen in all my years of gaming. And that's just the high at the end of the match. What comes next expands upon that and adds to the experience even further. Now, when you complete a match of any other game, it's over. Maybe you check your stats, see what attachments you unlocked by reaching the next level, and then you hop into another match. 
That's it, that's your progression. When you complete a raid of an extraction shooter, except for DMZ, you return with so much more to do. The gameplay is only half the experience. First, you have your stash, which is an entire progression system on its own. This is where you transfer all the items that you successfully exfilled with, building up your stash with weapons, gear, consumables, and other rare items, is how you ensure that you're prepared for whatever obstacles the next mission will have in store for you. In other game modes, you don't lose anything. You have unlimited access to every gun and any gear that you've already unlocked. So you can just drop into the next match and choose whatever you want at will. But in this game mode, you only have access to what you've exfilled with. So if you're repetitively dying, you'll slowly dwindle your resources to the point where you'll have to drop in naked, potentially with nothing, and just scavenge for anything that you can get your hands on in an attempt to build up your stock. But as you get better at the game and establish whatever playstyle works best for you, you'll begin to have multiple loadouts of equipment custom built by you through items that you found in raid or purchased through the in-game economy system, such as traders or an auction house where real players can make trades and place offers on other players listed items. Another common feature is the crafting system, which helps you to make use of all the random materials that you find in raids. The best extraction looter shooters make every item useful. What you found in a match could help you with crafting specific resources for you to use the next time you go in, or maybe sold to a trader to give you enough currency to purchase that weapon that you've had your eye on. Or they can be used for one of my personal favorite progression systems in these games, the player's hideout. There's several variations of this feature, but the premise is always the same. Utilizing materials, items, and potentially in-game currency, you're able to slowly upgrade your hideout to increasingly benefit your character over time. You could add an income generator that will supply you with a steady cash flow. You could upgrade your crafting bench to give you the capability to craft more items faster or unlock larger storage systems to give yourself more room to carry items out of raids and more room to store them in your stash. Then, of course, you have the standard mission progression that may allow you to level up certain factions that grant you larger and larger benefits over time, rewarding you with XP gain, maybe faction rep or in-game items with every mission that gets completed. There's just so much for a player to do. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, players are wanting more and more from the shooter games that they play. The oversaturation of battle royales over the last like six years should be a testament to that. But that trend is slowly dying and taking a different direction. We want more agency, allowing players to determine their own path of progression and their own winning conditions. Not solely dedicated to who is the sweatiest PVP Chad, but through the risk and the fear of losing everything from PVP and PVE. The market has been primed by Tarkov and mainstreamed by DMZ. The door is open and the levee is about to break. If you're excited about the next big genre explosion, I welcome you along for the ride, baby. Expect a plethora of videos on this channel about updates, gameplay, and reveals of all the big x games coming this year. In fact, here's everything that we know right now about the top five upcoming extraction looter shooters of 2023. See you there.